Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back. And um, this is the second part of the two podcasts that are all about uh, DNA replication. So without further ado, let's continue with where we left off on the last one. So in the first part of the DNA replication podcast, we were learning about this enzyme called DNA polymerase 3 that moves along the unzipped DNA strand and moves along each of the strands and basically builds the other half of the DNA. So ultimately we'll end up with two strands of DNA from the one that's been unzipped. And we talked about this idea of the rule, being that as it creates this second strand of DNA on top of the template strand, it can only add new nucleotides to the three end of the sugar molecule. So really quickly, we'll just go through this again. If you look at your screen now, you'll see the diagram there with one of the um, nucleotides being added to the strand of DNA. And then as the diagram now changes, we'll see that the next nucleotide has been added on so DNA polymerase would have added that on and it had to add it on at the top there it couldn't have gone below the first nucleotide and the reason for that is it can only add on to the third carbon atom of the sugar molecule not the fifth it can only add to the third so this means that the DNA polymerase 3 the enzyme that's building the second part of the DNA strand is only ever able to move in one direction because it's only able to add new nucleotides to the third carbon atom so it's going to add that phosphate to the third carbon atom it cannot add to the fifth carbon atom there so if we have another look at the video now we'll be able to see that we've got the DNA polymerase 3 molecule moving along and it's moving in that direction where it's adding a new nucleotide onto the third atom of the carbon oh sorry third carbon atom of the sugar molecule now looking at the uh, image again on your screen, we've got the image from the course book that we were using earlier on and we've been talking about in the last couple of podcasts of the diagram, it's basically the diagram of DNA. And we've got to remember that DNA is an anti-parallel molecule. So when it's unzipped, one part of the unzip or one half of the unzipped DNA, basically you've got the molecule moving one way, so the five pointing towards where the DNA has been split up if you like. And then the other part of the molecule, if you like, the pentagons are pointing the other way. So on the top strand of the DNA, the pentagons might be pointing in one direction. And on the bottom strand of DNA that's been unzipped, the pentagons are pointing the other way. So it's sort of in an opposite direction. Now that has quite big consequences for the way that DNA is replicated. And as the label on the video shows there, we've got continuous replication of what we're calling the leading strand. Now we're saying that because DNA polymerase 3 is able to continuously move along that strand at the top there towards where helicase is actually separating the DNA. And DNA polymerase 3 can continue to do this as long as helicase is continuing to split the DNA up. DNA polymerase 3 will just be moving on after it and just keep going on and going on and going on, continuously replicating that strand of DNA. However, if we look at the other strand of DNA at the bottom, that's not the same story and that's all because of this idea of the anti-parallel nature of DNA so because DNA polymerase 3 is only able to move in that one direction it can't move towards the replication fork or towards the helicase on the bottom strand it actually has to move away from the helicase and that's where things get a little bit tricky so as the video is showing you there you've got the top strand there where the DNA polymerase 3 is able to continuously replicate and we call that the leading strand and the bottom strand there, where DNA polymerase has to move away from the replication fork, because that's the only way it can move, in that direction only adding new nucleotides to the three end, we call that the lagging strand. And the lagging strand is the most difficult, if you like, for the DNA replication to take place on. So rather than DNA polymerase 3 continuously replicating the lagging strand, you've got a quite different chain of events going to be taking place there. So the first thing that happens, we've got a new enzyme actually going to be getting up to stuff here, and that's RNA primase. So that's the third enzyme. We've got helicase, DNA polymerase, and now we've got RNA primase. Now, as you can see on the screen there, RNA primase is actually creating a short strand that actually fits onto the lagging strand. Now, that strand isn't DNA, but it's RNA, which is quite similar to DNA, but at the same time, it's got some distinct differences that we're not going to worry about at the minute. So we're just going to say that RNA primase lays on a very, very short piece of RNA, and that's called a primer. Now, I'm, sure, I'm not sure if you know what the word primer actually means, so we'll have a quick look at that. Now, 
If you're thinking about, for example, maybe painting something, maybe you're having a respray done on your car or you're painting a wall or something, quite often you use a primer first, and that's almost like an undercoat. So you put the primer on, and that basically then allows the paint that you're going to put on to stick to the surface a little bit better. And that's similar to what our, this RNA primer actually is. It's a short piece of RNA that binds onto the DNA, and it's there as a primer that allows the DNA polymerase 3 to bind on and then continue to replicate. And as you can see here, we've got DNA polymerase 3 moving on on top of the RNA primer and then just moving on in that same direction, adding new nucleotides to the three end of the DNA. And this time, obviously moving in the opposite direction because the DNA is that anti-parallel molecule that we keep talking about. So that DNA polymerase 3 that's moved on is now just going to keep moving on until it hits another primer that was laid down earlier, which you can see on the video screen now. So effectively what's actually happened there is the DNA polymerase 3 has actually formed a shorter fragment of DNA between the two primers that have been formed there. Now we actually have a special name for that fragment and it's called an Okazaki fragment. Uh, Okazaki is named after a Japanese scientist that actually identified these, that these fragments actually existed in the first place. So when the DNA polymerase 3 has made that fragment and it's hit the next primer, then basically it sort of moves away and DNA polymerase or another DNA polymerase 3 enzyme will then, as you can see on the screen, form the next fragment. So basically there's just lots of fragments being formed between these primers that are being laid down by the RNA primates. So on the lagging strand now, what we've got is we've got the Okazaki fragments, the sections of DNA that have been made by DNA polymerase 3, and in between them we've currently got pieces of RNA primer. They're the bits that are coloured green. So the red bits are the Okazaki fragments and the green parts are the primer. Now coming on the screen now, you'll see another enzyme. So now we've got DNA polymerase 1. So this is, I think, the fourth enzyme we've got. So we've had helicase, it's unwinding the DNA. We've got DNA polymerase 3 that's constantly, or basically, synthesizing the DNA, making the DNA. Then we've got RNA primase, which is basically laying down those short RNA primers on the lagging strand. And now we've got DNA polymerase 1. Now DNA polymerase 1 has got quite a simple job. All it does is just move along the lagging strand and basically as it's moving along the lagging strand it's just replacing those primers, those RNA primers, it's basically just replacing those with DNA. So it basically gets rid of the RNA and it puts down DNA in its place. So now on the lagging strand you've got the Okazaki fragments and now you've got the parts of the, where the primers were in between the Okazaki fragments have now been replaced with DNA. So you've pretty much just got constantly uh, or continuously um, continuous pieces of DNA now on the lagging strand as well. And then we've got one final enzyme, which as you can see on the screen is called DNA ligase. Now as you become a little bit more familiar with the biotechnology stuff, you'll know that DNA ligase is basically DNA glue. And all it does is moves along the lagging strand and basically glues all those fragments, those fragments of DNA, the Okazaki fragments and the bits that DNA polymerase 1 has created all together. And it actually basically just forms that sugar phosphate backbone of the DNA and makes sure it's all nice and secure and permanently put together. So basically that's it. And it's not an easy sort of process to take place. You will have to watch the video a few times to sort of piece it together. But basically what you've got is you've got two different strands of DNA, the leading strand and the lagging strand. The only difference between the two is the, the fact that the leading strand, DNA polymerase 3, because it can only add new nucleotides to the three end, it basically just keeps going continuously towards a replication fork. However, because it can only move in that one direction, it has to move away from the replication fork on the lagging strand, which is that bottom strand there. And it forms those Okazaki fragments and so on and so forth. But ultimately what we've got happening is the leading strand and the lagging strand being synthesized at the same time till eventually we've got two identical strands of DNA from the original one strand of DNA. So we've basically replicated the molecule DNA. So the 10 minutes is coming to a close once again. Um, hope this has been useful. Remember, use the wiki space to ask questions and things like that. Or comment on the video to ask questions and anything I can make a little bit clearer. That'll all be good. Um, I'll see you around. Take it easy and keep it real.